Welcome back. The evacuation orders for two Douglas County fires were lifted Monday. The fires burned roughly 22,212 acres during the weekend and forced residents of the Rimrock Meadows community to evacuate their homes on Saturday. Lightning strikes started five fires in Douglas County on Friday. The fires merged into two larger fires. Officials issued a level three evacuation order for the residents in Rimrock Meadows in Grant County. The American Red Cross opened a shelter in the Afreda High School for people displaced by the fire. The evacuation order was lessened to a level one notice by Sunday, warning people they should be aware of the fire. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office lifted the remaining evacuation notices on Monday afternoon. According to Washington State Patrol, the fire is presently 55% contained and there are no reports of injuries or damaged homes. The Port of Moses Lake, the Port of Warden, and the Palouse River Cooley City Railroad are all receiving money in the 2015 state budget. Governor Jay Inslee is expected to sign the $16.1 billion transportation package, giving the Port of Moses Lake $20.9 million to reconnect to industrial rail lines for the first time in 30 years. The new line would bypass track currently installed in downtown Moses Lake, connecting to the Wheeler Line west of town and running through agricultural areas before linking up to tracks off State Route 17 near Park Lanes. The non-use portion of track downtown is expected to be covered, converted into walking and recreational paths, and no plans have yet been finalized by either the city or port. The Port of Warden is receiving $2 million to build additions to their existing rail track, giving them room to store rail cars not in use and providing a better flow of trains coming through the area. In Northwest News, a 16-year-old girl hiked alone out of the North Central Washington wilderness after a plane crash and continues her recovery. KCPQ News has a story. It is excellent news. News that surprised many who have been working to locate Leland and Sharon Bowman and granddaughter Autumn. Usually when something of this order occurs, uh, you, you don't have even... Uh, you don't know the joy that you feel as someone searching uh, when, when you hear news like this. Late this afternoon, officials in Okanagan received a call from a store in Mazama, Washington, saying a teen showed up, saying she survived a plane crash. We have a young woman here who is being interviewed by law enforcement and attended to by medics. She walked in and she seems very disoriented, but um, I don't know, the EMTs are with her now, so I, don't, I really don't know anything more than that. The Okanagan Sheriff's Office says the teen had been walking for two days before she says a man gave her a ride along Highway 20. The Bowmans and Autumn left Kalispell, Montana Saturday afternoon in their Beach 35 aircraft. They were headed to Linden that day, but never made it. For the last two days, members of the Civil Air Patrol have been searching for signs of the plane or the aircraft's emergency beacon. This would be a tremendous development, and, and I, I think after meeting with the family, I just know I can just, I am so, I am so hopeful for this that the, that the reports are, are correct and accurate. The movie Max is shining a spotlight on military working dogs. Max is the four-legged Marines in the military working dog platoon at Camp Pendleton. For CNN, Hannah Mullins has a story of one of those canine vets who made a big sacrifice. It's kind of like one of your own kids. They're not the usual boots on the ground, but they're valuable troops. She joined the Marine Corps on uh, April 23rd, 2006, and that's when Luke and I were first paired together. Gunnery Sergeant Chris Willingham joined 17 years ago, and he's the big dog in the platoon. The canines don't just go after the bad guys. They protect the good guys. IEDs emerged as the biggest threat during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. One of the best countermeasures was a well-trained dog team. The two served two tours in Iraq together. Then she deployed to Afghanistan with another Marine. They found one IED and she kept searching. A secondary was booby-trapped and detonated. It blew her leg off. And uh, Rodriguez ran past the known IED, put the tourniquet on her leg. Uh, picked her up and ran her back to safety, and they called in a medevac. Luca is a disabled vet with an honorary Purple Heart. Whether it's good times or bad times, the dog's always there for you. Like when he struggled with the loss of another dog team. And Luca just got up, came over, and rested her head on my leg. And, the dogs become part of your family, uh, but being a military working dog handler, when you take that dog down range and they're responsible for saving your life, it kind of takes it to another level. She'd probably follow him back into battle if she could, 
so he adopted her. My dog Luca is the only reason I made it home to my family, and I'll you know forever be grateful for that. He's a proud dog dad of a four-legged war hero. Luca did uh, three combat deployments and led about 400 patrols, and uh, nobody was ever injured when she was walking point. That's going to do it here for us at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.